Hello everyone. So um, I've been trying to you know escape the opportunity to be to speak in front of a camera, um, but I really want to share that stuff. I mean, I really want to share stuff. That's why I started blogging back in two thousand seven during my multiply days. So I found a way I can actually share with you without talking in front of the camera. I wanted to share with you guys today how I recreated the Tooth Fairy. So this is just one of the few scenes that I made. This is the existing character they have from their packaging. And I just wanted it to be consistent with all the other characters that I also created. In this video, I'll be attempting to make the, the curves, the lines, and the thickness of the lines consistent with the other characters already created. I realized it's actually easier to recreate the scene then record myself while doing it because the process is really long, like from conceptualization, from building the path. So here I'm copying the shape of the tooth and then I made the, the outline. Then I'm trying to make it like this dark shade of brown so that it's consistent with other characters. I'm still getting the same set of eyes. So there, just making sure that the color is as black as the one we have. And then after this, so there, um, I'm picking a character from another file and making sure it's consistent with the shapes that are already existing in the project. So that's how you actually make something appear cohesive. So, so this is the cheek. I'm actually such a fan of this shape. It's an imperfect circle that I made from scratch. And then I'm still getting the pink tint for the cheeks. So there, um, I'm trying to create the mouth, so it in essence is a circle, but I'm removing the half, the other half of it, and then just resizing it just for it to become a mouth again, so that it's consistent with the other characters. I know I've said it too, one too many times. So copying the images I created on the left, the image I created on the left is actually easy, but like, again, as I've said, conceptualization is hard, like just, you know, trying to think, um, trying to experiment with different scenarios, with different shapes, with different thicknesses, palettes. So here I'm creating the the gray lines. So it's supposed to be like a reflection or just for it to look like it's round. I know my drawings are flat, but I don't know. That's just the style I love. So I'd like to thank my sister for um, helping me out with the palette. I'm not usually a fan of the darker colors, but she helped me create like a nighttime look for Tiny Buds. So Tiny Buds actually has like bright colors, daytime colors. So pink, yellow, and orange, especially for this set of products. So this is a tiny hand. I'm just trying to put the same thickness on it. And then in a bit, I'll be recreating the wand so that it has round edges. I meant round corners. So if you've noticed on the left, the green that I used, it's actually, well, in real life, like, what I mean by real life, like analog, if you're using, like, traditional tools, then with watercolor, let's say, to recreate that shade of green, you actually have to put a bit of purple. That's why I think the palette works, because there is green, there's purple, and if you mix the two, then you're going to get that shade of blue-green. So here I'm trying to, you know, spell out for you guys what the palette is of Tiny Bud. So we have yellow, we have um, pink, and then we also have orange and green. So that's basically the package for the packaging that I'm trying to communicate through this scene. So I am taking that and combining it with like more colors and so there. I'm copying the star, I'm making it bigger just so that, I don't know, it's just a matter of personal preference. And then I'm removing the outline and copying the shade of yellow that I used. And here I'm trying to put an outline, but first I need to make the corners really round. So you can actually define how round your corner how round you want your corners to be. So after which I can now put the outline. So effects path offset path. So there, so that's brown. It's a dark shade of brown.
So now that we're done recreating the wand, I am going to show you how I made this sparkle, tiny sparkle. It's actually a combination of shapes. It's a square and so we have a square and four circles. That's what I usually do. I would call on the grid and then I create um, four, four circles over it of equal size. So copy and paste, copy, paste is always your friend. And then I combine the paths into one shape and ungroup them and delete all the unnecessary shapes. This is a process that I do over and over. I really love this function, it makes my life easy. So again, that's a sparkle. Then you copy and paste it over and over and recolor it. So that when you look at the sparkles on the left, it's like there's a lot, but you actually just recolored it and used it over and over. So for projects like this, it's actually fun to make tiny elements once you're done, like figure out, figuring out the palette, the scene, how everything's going to play. Um, some people are asking me, like, do you sketch before you do digital work? I think that's a, I don't know, I'm, I'm shy to admit it, but um, I don't actually sketch when I do digital. I just, you know, I feel like that's already my scratch paper right there. Like you can... Um, click on undo so many times that you can just do the sketches there. I know some people are more systematic about it. They sketch and which is actually a lovely process. It's just that maybe I'm not as patient. I have a lower EQ than them that I just want to see the results right away. I try to visualize it in my mind and put it um, on my and, and see like how um, how my ideas unfold on the screen. So here, we now have the old character and the new character beside each other. Um, so there, now we're trying to recreate the wings. These are butterfly wings. I wanted them, again, to be consistent with the curves that I usually use. So, um, so this is, I'm turning it to another shade of blue so that it it stands out with a dark background, but, but it also, but it's also not too light so that it doesn't fade compared to the really vibrant colors in the background. So, um, so if you noticed, it's a, it was initially a circle, then I pulled one of the um, anchor points and now it's a curve. So I'm putting the tooth here in this area again. This wing is actually based on um, uh, the mane of the lion. So again, if you want something cohesive, you have to copy some edges um, from your other elements so that it will um, look like the colors belong to the same family, the shapes belong to the same family, and stuff like that. If you're trying to make like two of the same shape, just flip the shape horizontally or vertically and it will save you so much time. So um, just for consistency, now that I've tried recreating it, but I just really want to get the exact curve, I'm copying and pasting from the work that I did. So before what I do, um, I usually group stuff and, and group them if I want to take um, take a shape out or want to edit it. Actually, I realized you just have to double click it <laughs> instead of grouping and grouping everything the whole every single time you have to work on a file. Um, that way you don't like destroy the groupings and you don't get annoyed with like the time you have to spend on having to go through each shape.
So now I'm playing with the sparkles and recoloring them based on the palette. Now I'm trying to recreate the crown. It's actually just a combination of shapes. Um, at this point, I would call in the grid and I'd let everything snap to the grid so that it's easier for me um, to recreate shapes. Here I'm trying to make my own triangle from scratch. And so I start with a rectangle and then I put an anchor point in between and then delete the anchor points in the left and right. Then as usual, I copy and paste so you'd have the same shape over and over and then you know the grid really helps me a lot it helps me center stuff and now i'm putting the circles and then i realize it's too big so i need to resize them or else they'll be beside each other so here so i'm resizing them and i want to i really want to make sure they're aligned so there so you can see there's an x mark you can put it on the tip of the triangle with my drawing style, I think it's there's a lot of alignment that goes on there. <laughs> but but it's fun to align them. Now I'm gonna put another I'm gonna create another rectangle and then an oval below it. The triangles are too tall, so let me resize them and then let me move the circles there. So now I'm gonna create an oval and combine all these shapes. And turn them into a crown but before combining all these shapes i'm going to make a backup on the side so every time so remember this i think this is a big help like before you make a drastic move like before you combine shapes and stuff you just might want to make or create a backup just in case for example later you want to modify it again you don't have to create it from scratch and here i'm recreating the shadow for the crown usually it's just you know a darker shade of for example, this one, this is already yellow-orange, so the shadow will be orange or just a darker shade of yellow-orange. And then I'm aligning them. All right. Whoops. There you go. And now that you have the crown, again, I'll be creating the outline for this. This is point eight, so that's the outline. Then there, I'm gonna put the crown on top of the tooth fairy. So there you have the um, character from the packaging and the tweak character tweak based on uh, the existing characters in the story bill. Now we have to create the background. So we will start with the soil. So there's brown. And then I'm showing you how I created the palette for this. Again, um, we needed a nighttime scene. And so I'm combining. Um, I had to work with green and purple for nighttime. And then the colors that I chose in between, like the shades of blue green here, are actually a combination of green and violet. Like with traditional medium, you will be able to produce that, you know, to make a color darker, you just to have to add purple to any bright color. So actually purple or brown. Yeah, so I'm combining it with a... So these are my guides. Um, when I look at other books, I wonder why, like the illustrations are so cohesive. Apparently they just work with a limited color scheme. Although it's so funny that I'm saying this because even if, you know, I attempt to work on two to three or five colors I always end up like with the colors of the entire rainbow like here you'll see I have pink orange yellow green blue and purple and indigo and brown and white so and black even so that's a lot actually um so we will start with the background I'm locking the background so that it doesn't move 
all the time. So I'm recreating the bushes behind this. It's actually very simple. It's just a matter of copy and pasting. Um, so for this one, I know it's very simple, but just to walk you through like how I um, did this. When we were on vacation last October, I would, you know, go th um, try to observe the arrangement of the plants in botanical parks, like see how they would lay themselves out and how they play with each other in terms of layout. And um, I took a lot of pictures wherever I go. I had, you know, tried to observe the structures of the leaves. I know, I know today we're just working with circles, but, you know, nature is always the best like, reference. And even if you're not really sketching from nature, whatever it is that you feed your mind with, it kind of comes out like um, through your hand, like consciously or unconsciously. You know, um, when I um, hold watercolor workshops, I would see people like create characters similar to like TV, certain TV shows. And I'd ask them if that's like something they used to watch as a child. And more often th than not, um, the answer is always yes. So this is just a reminder that, um, you know, our mind's really powerful. It can absorb anything consciously or consciously. So if you want to feed your mind with inspiration, then, you know, feel free to do so. So there, I'm just letting the shapes move harmoniously. Well, actually, you know, this part is all a matter of personal preference. There really are no rules. Well, there are hard rules, like if you want to do realism, like... Uh, this object like or a certain color has to be in front or at the back but at this point i'm just really playing and trying to imagine that these are bushes in front or behind each other um i know we're recreating it this way like just copying it copying and pasting circles but even before i did the character redesign um earlier this year well during vacation i don't know because maybe vacations you know are relaxing i was able to draw so he said, oh, no, why are you working on vacation? But because it's so relaxing, it's easier to draw when your mind is so relaxed. So I was able to draw the night scene even before I did the character. Um, I tried to put more time drawing the background because I'm always, you know, doing characters. I'm always doing singular subjects. So I just really wanted to, you know, um, further my skill in terms of um, creating backgrounds by just really taking time. And actually, before this became a nighttime version, there's a daytime version of this scene. And I don't know, maybe if we have more time next time, I can show you how I did it and the thought process behind it. Um, well, sorry, I'm babbling away. I hope the tips that I'm telling you are actually helping. Um, They're just resizing all the circles and making them interact with each other. So if you've noticed by now, um, Illustrator actually acts like PowerPoint in the sense that you're creating shapes, you're creating colors, um, outlines. It's just that it's more flexible. You can combine them. But you know, I've been doing a lot of copy paste. So that's control or command C for Mac, command C, um, bring to front, send to back. And if you're able to memorize the keyboard shortcuts, then that's always a big plus. Um, I always tell that um, to students when we're doing like the digitizing workshop. I don't know if you um, want like to attend another digitizing workshop, but if you do, let us, you know, let me know in the comments in the comment section below or if you want more of these videos or if you have other questions that are not addressed in these videos uh, in this particular video then let me know in essence i'm just copying and pasting the plants that i already created you know, in essence, if you look at how this was made, this is actually how the wing was also made. It just took me a while to decide that that was the plant that was going to be this scene. So, you know, over the vacation, I was going back and forth, these fictional trees. 
wondering if they they would be apt for the scene. Now I'm putting shadows on all the bushes. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to, um, I tilted the tooth fairy and then I'm trying, um, I'm trying to make this character look as if it's looking to the right. So I'm just doing the mouth, but like if I'm drawing on paper, I'm actually following a grid. So I'm putting all the facial features to the right so that it looks like it's looking or communicating to another subject, which we will reveal once this project is done. Right. So there, pulling all the facial features to the right so that it's as if it's communicating to someone on the right. So, so now I'm creating the spotlight for the tooth fairy. Well, we have two op options and at this point we're still deciding between the two. Once this project is done, you, you're going to know like which one actually makes it. So for this one, I picked the gradient that disappears into nothingness. I don't know what it's called, but it's just, I picked it from the swatch box and it has luckily, you know, matched the project. And um, as, as I always say, the software tools are always based on traditional tools so if this was watercolor you're actually you know creating a like a glazing of sorts you're putting like a thin layer a translucent layer of paint on top of your existing subject and this cloud is actually from the tiny buds packaging and i recolored it the same way i did the gradients but i wanted to put like a semblance of more like uh, white clouds behind so i'm picking a lighter shade of violet and copying and pasting it and putting it then in the background just you know to make um i don't know make the background look more busy but in this in a subtle way like there's something but it's so light that um you won't notice it but it's just there so there i'm just trying to get the right size so we send to back again and now I can put the the leaf over there. So I'm just transferring this the, the pal to the right. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're almost done. Um just trying to establish more contrast by putting elements that are darker than the background. I learned this from my sister Trisha. You know, she's always, when she looks at my work, she's been looking at my work since the Googly Googly started in 2009. And she would always comment like, um, you know, put more highlights, put more shadows. Or, well, of course, my drawings are flat, but she'd always emphasize that, emphasize that I should work on contrast. So here I'm trying to create a lighter shade of violet. there just final tweaks it's just me trying to make all the sparkles upright so there we hope to see you next time and let us know again like whatever it is that you want to learn or you want to ask and so just let us know in the comment section again this is Tippy from the googly gooeys one day i will have the courage to show my face on the camera i don't know i'm such an introvert anyway so there bye